Panya here, and I am coming to talk about the nervous system. And you may be asking, why do we need to talk about the nervous system when it comes to branding my business? And it's because stress happens everywhere. It's part of every part of our life. So I want to talk a little bit about the nervous system, the different parts of it, and also the two practices that I coach with in Pure Joy Parenting, the sacred seat and the safe seat. And the central nervous system, so starting off, the central nervous system has two parts of it, the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. So parasympathetic is that rest and digest that we all need in order to recover and to keep from getting overworked and stressed. And the sympathetic the rest and digest also includes those like digestion and uh, breathing, things like that. Sympathetic are the responses, the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn responses. So I'm not going to go into great deal about this. There's a lot of other videos I've made about this um, and you can Google it as well. But each of these fight, flight, freeze, and fawn responses show up differently for different people. We are all unique with the way that we react to stressors in our lives. So depending on your own coping strategies, um, then you have the ability to regulate and return to yourself to, um, to be able to rest and come out of that uh, sympathetic nervous system. Sometimes you do live in it if you are in a chronic state of stress or overwhelm. Now, there's a lot out there about trauma as well, big T, little T, uh, and that has to do with how your body had perceived the stressor in the first place. So um, there can be prolonged stress that causes trauma. There can be an acute stress that causes trauma. So why are we discussing this? in branding from home, because it will surface, your triggers will surface in your business and through the process of building your business or branding it and talking about yourself in your business and your reasons, your whys, all of the things that we've been working on in this course. Um, so they will continue to show up in your life if you don't address them and look at them. And these two practices are a way for you to do that along your journey. So Pure Joy Coaching has a practice called the Sacred Seat. Now, to me, the Sacred Seat, you may have already been doing something like this. It's anything that brings you back to yourself, sitting for some time with yourself, journaling or meditating, or maybe it's walking in nature. What are the things that you do that bring you back to your your own self, your state of rest. Now, if you aren't doing that, it is very important to the longevity of your business to have some self-care practices um, and, and or a coach, <laughs> a coach for that as well. Um, because the practice means that it needs to happen repeatedly. And that doesn't mean you have to be perfect. It doesn't, doesn't mean it has to be like, the same time every day, but a repeated practice that you do that connects you to yourself and, and allows you to come back into a regulated state of rest, uh, de-stressing. Um, our second practice in Pure Joy is what I want to talk to you about the most, the safe seat practice. Now, the safe seat practice um, can be used in the moment of an activation or a stress. So if you are working with somebody or you are uh, selling a product or you're going out to market yourself and you um, are faced with a trigger, what you can do in that moment to regulate and to attune with yourself rather than going into one of your coping strategies, which could be fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. Now we use a metaphor in Pure Joy of the game of tag. So just to imagine how this works in real life, um, thinking back to childhood, that game of tag where all the kids are running around the field and there's a tagger and they're all screaming and running and there's excitement, there's fear, there's all the things. And the tagger is coming towards 
you can imagine coming towards you or to another child, if you want to practice this in real life right now with me, you can visualize that you're about to get tagged and what would be one of your responses? What would you initially want to do when the tagger is approaching you? Now, it could be that you're going to fight harder, um, run away harder, or even fight back. It could be um, flight where you're just going to give up um, and, or, or yeah, just lay down or um, say time out or I don't want to play anymore, those kind of things. Um, freeze. Maybe you just freeze up, right? And you just don't know what to do. That is a response as well. And the tagger just gets you. Just stop. Okay. And there's this fawn response as well, which is the people pleasing, like, oh, I want to help the person. I want to play, you know, be there for everybody, hyper vigilant. What does this person need? What does that person need? Um, oh, not everybody had a turn yet. So trying to take care of the other person giving up of yourself now there's nuance here and it can be different for people so um that's just a couple of examples so how does this relate to oh okay so how does this relate to business and what you're calling the safe seat right so in the game of tag you actually have a safe base to go to this is why it was developed a place where you could go and take a rest, catch your breath, feel safe again, look around at the game and realize the rules and, you know, people aren't really like scary. Um, and you feel safe again to be able to play again. So the safe base was developed for that reason. And so Leslie Potter of Pure Joy Parenting developed the safe seat practice when she wasn't feeling safe in the parenting of her daughter. And she was getting highly activated she developed a safe seat practice now this can also happen in any part of any relationship um client coach or business colleagues partners anything so what you would do in the safe seat practice would be to when you feel like you are going into one of your coping strategies taking a break pausing going to this safe seat. And the more you practice this in your sacred seat, getting to know your own triggers, your own strategies, then in the moment, you'll be able to recognize when you are actually activated and acting out of your stress response. In order to get to know our triggers, which the definition of a trigger is uh, a flashback, to some previous moment in your life. So you're no longer present with what's actually in front of you. You're living out of some past experience. In order to get to know the triggers, we have to break it down into its parts. And that's what we do when we safe seat our trigger. So the first part of a trigger is the sensations that you have in your body. So starting to understand what, when you are feeling triggered, what is your stress response in your body? Do you feel um, flutters in the chest? Do you feel like you want to cry? Do uh, you feel like you just want to move, get out of there? What is your sensation in your body? It could be that you're just wanting to leave your body, right? Like go up into your head and, and strategize. So this can be really unfamiliar to come back and touch with the body if you've been disassociating from the body for so long. Uh, that's why we call it a practice. The second part of the trigger is a story or belief that you've come to. At some point in your life, you came to some conclusion about yourself, some belief in the moment um, or a story that you've been telling yourself on repeat. And that can come up in the middle of a trigger, um, part of the trigger. The third part of a trigger is the feeling or emotion that is kind of a part of this story or belief, or it might have um, made you come to a conclusion. So things like I am unlovable, or I am feeling sad, um, super angry, which is normally 
a, it's like the tip of the iceberg emotion. There is usually emotions under there. Like I'm feeling really powerless or helpless. Um, and maybe even feeling unlovable. Did I say that? Or rejected. And so the last part of a trigger is that all those feelings that you're having that are subconscious, usually unconscious, <laughs> will drive your behavior in that moment. So depending on what some of your strategies are, it will show up in the behavior, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn behavior. And so the reason we want to break our triggers down into parts is so we can really, really slow down and understand our um, reaction to what's happening in the present moment so we can respond in the way that we want to based on our core values in our business um, and our life in general. So we will be um, visiting some triggers that might surface in your business. We can bring some of them up in the meeting. Um, and this is what we do in coaching calls. When you book a session with me, we go through, you know, what could be under the surface here, uh, something that's really been keeping you stuck or been coming up as a repeated pattern in your life. I look forward to practicing with you.